So chat GPT, you failed. Right, 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 right. It's not that bad, but I think that if you're entering into a deal that's important to you, you probably want to think about these points. Hey guys, welcome back to Founders Talk. In this video, we will be doing something really interesting. It is chat GBT versus lawyer. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a startup lawyer with seven to eight years of corporate experience. And in this video, I'm going to challenge chat GBT. For this task, we're going for something really simple called the non-disclosure agreement, otherwise known as NDA. And we're going to see what kind of contract chat GBT spits out. Let's go. Please produce a non-disclosure agreement. So the first clause talks about the definition of confidential information. Now that makes a lot of sense. We typically have a more robust definition of confidential information, and we typically tweak the confidential information definition to the purpose. So for example, if you're signing an NDA to enter into a fundraising transaction, the scope of confidential information will look quite different. My gut sense is that it looks quite narrow at the moment because it defines confidential information as something that includes all non-public information. But the general structure of the agreement looks pretty good. The receiving party agrees not to disclose or use confidential information for any purpose outside of the scope of this agreement except with the disclosing party's written consent. Well, I love this because I just found a flaw in ChatGPT. The first flaw that I've seen is they have not defined purpose. So if you do bring this NDA to court, for example, the fact that purpose is not defined makes this NDA kind of useless because it is up to me to argue to the court or the judge that the purpose of this scope of this agreement is ABC versus the other person's definition of CDE. So what we typically do as lawyers, especially for NDAs relating to important transactions, is that we'll define the purpose quite narrowly if it's a very specific transaction, let's say, for example, if you intend to sell your company, we'll say the purpose of this NDA is for you to disclose information to your professional advisors or your lawyers. If it's generic, we'll say, okay, we allow you to disclose the information that you receive for the purposes of executing this project and we actually define what this project is, the receiving party shall protect the secrecy of the confidential information with the same degree of care as it uses to protect its own confidential information and in no event with less than a reasonable degree of care. Now, I think that's quite a reasonable provision to include, but I've seen variations of this. For example, an obligation that the receiving party ensures that any person that receives such an information would sign an NDA or an agreement with similar confidentiality provisions. So it kind of really depends on what this NDA is used for. If it's something not so important to your business, you might want to close one eye, but if it's a very important transaction, it's a very competitive market, you might want to make sure that all these lines are cleared up. Now the next clause talks about exceptions. So it says confidential information does not include information that is or becomes publicly known through no wrongful act of the receiving party. Yes, I've seen that clause a lot. It's, it seems reasonable. Or it is independently developed by the receiving party without reference to the confidential information. Or is approved for release by written authorization of the disclosing party. Or is lawfully obtained from a third party without any obligation of confidentiality. Now, 3D is probably something I don't see very often because it's quite debatable to say that I have obtained something without an obligation of confidentiality. So I would actually strike that out. It's something that I would probably feel very uncomfortable with. A decent NDA would also include an exception that says that if any court or recognized tribunal requests for such information to be released, the NDA should have an exception for that. Now, I don't see that in this NDA, so that's something that I would take a look at and you know maybe get a lawyer like Rachel to amend. The next provision is duration. In this agreement, it says this agreement and the obligations of the receiving party here under shall last for a period of X from the date of disclosure of confidential information. 
I like this provision. It does put a time frame to it. There is currently, as I understand, nothing that prevents people from saying that you have to have a particular time limit to confidentiality obligations. But as a receiving party, what you might want to think about is when do I want the clock to start ticking for the confidentiality obligation to apply? Because what this agreement says is that from the date that I disclose information to you, which could be a date that's like three years ago, this NDA applies until two years from that date. So technically speaking, if I am quite smart about things and I want to be naughty, I can say that you disclosed your information to me two years ago and we signed this agreement today. Therefore, it no longer applies. So what I would do actually for this clause is I would say that this agreement shall last for a period of two years from the date of this agreement. And I'll actually tweak it to say that, but it will commence from the date of disclosure of confidential information, if that's what the parties intend, or if the intention of the parties is that the NDA will only apply on the date that the NDA is signed and nothing before that, then I will have to tweak this clause. The next clause is return or destruction. I like it. I like it that ChatGBT put it in the first version. It says, upon written request of the disclosing party, the receiving party shall return or at the disclosing party's option, destroy all copies of the confidential information in its possession. Now, there are a couple of variations to this provision, which is probably not covered in this NDA. The first variation is there are some obligations of certain parties to retain information. So I would typically see a carve out that says, unless you have to retain an internal copy, that carve out does not appear in this clause. The second carve-out that doesn't appear in this clause, or I wouldn't say carve-out, I would say a specificity, is that this clause seems to suggest that it may only relate to physical copies of information. Because we, I would expect to see something more specific about electronic copies. And in today's age, a lot of the information is electronically communicated. And the third issue I guess I have with this clause, it says that the obligation of the receiving party is to destroy all copies of the confidential information. Copies typically insinuates that there is an original version. So is this clause saying that I can keep the original version, but only have the obligation to destroy the copies? A clause that's a bit tighter would probably say something like you have to delete any material that contains all of or part of the confidential information. And I would probably like something that says, plus I would like you to confirm to me in writing that you've done that. Clause six is interesting. It says no license or transfer. And to read this out, it says nothing in this agreement is intended to grant any rights under any patent or copyright of the disclosing party, nor shall this agreement grant the receiving party any rights in or to the confidential information other than the limited right to review such confidential information. I would say that I don't see this provision very often. It sounds intuitively a bit wrong because it says it does not grant any rights under patent or copyright. But my understanding is patent and copyright is just one type of IP. So I would probably want a more robust clause to say that Nothing in this agreement is intended to grant you any right whatsoever or any IP rights or any ownership in the information that I've given you. The next two clauses relates to governing law and entire agreement. Now, the first thing is governing law, right? What is missing from this clause seven on governing law is dispute resolution. Right, the whole purpose of us entering into agreements is to figure out if we do have a dispute with this agreement, where do we go to? So I would typically accompany the governing law clause with a dispute resolution clause. Last clause, which says entire agreement. It says this agreement contains the entire agreement between the parties concerning the confidential information and supersedes any prior understanding written or oral relating to the subject matter of this agreement. Now, I find this clause a bit odd because entire agreement provisions are meant to cover times when you give reps and warranties. I will put in this clause to say that, look, I know we had discussions in the past about selling you less or more, but today we have decided on 500,000 and we have signed it on the paper dot. This is our final understanding. 
So the fact that ChatGPT is telling you to say that this is the entire agreement between the parties concerning the confidential information feels really odd because the entire agreement is probably going to come in later. So ChatGPT, you fail. I'm just kidding. It's not that bad, but I think that if you're entering into a deal that's important to you, you probably want to think about these points. Now, we're going to play with ChatGPT a little bit because someone also told me that you can prompt ChatGPT to tweak and I'm going to say, please amend the agreement so that it is governed by Singapore law and insert a dispute resolution clause. Okay, so the dispute resolution clause that is inserted is an SIAC arbitration clause. Broadly speaking, there are three types of ways to resolve your disputes if you choose Singapore as your crown destination. The first way is the exclusive or non-exclusive jurisdiction of the Singapore courts. The second, which is quite popular, is arbitration. And the third is mediation. Now, in this instance, I'm not going to fault ChatGPT for including a dispute resolution clause at its own will. But what I would say is if this is your first time seeing an agreement, is you won't know that there are other variations of dispute resolution provisions that exist that could impact you. But I hope that through this video, you would realize that there are some intricacies in the different provisions that can cover a very simple document. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you liked it, remember to like, share and subscribe. If you'd like me to review any other documents produced by ChatGPT, let us know in the comments below. See you. Bye.